In this lecture video, we're going to learn how to use the component method in order to add vectors together. Whenever we have vectors, remember a vector is magnitude, so having a size, as well as having a direction, so an angle relative to some zero point that the object is traveling at. So in order to add together two quantities that have both magnitude and direction, we have to take into account both the magnitude and direction. And we're going to do that by learning the component method. And the component method is going to break the vectors into components, or the amount that the vector is going in one direction versus the other. So I'm going to walk you through an example problem using the component method, and then I'll post an additional video with another example that you can work on. So we have three vectors here that we want to add together. We have vector A, so vector A has a magnitude and direction, so 54 meters, 6 degrees north of east. Vector B is 30 meters, 30 degrees south of west. And then vector C is 17 meters, 15 degrees north of west. So our goal here today is to determine what A plus B plus C is. And I'm starting with meters or displacement. However, any vector quantity can be added together using this method. And so we'll continue to use this or pieces of this throughout the semester. All right, so I've already written down step one. Step one says we need to break each vector into x and y components using trig functions. In order to be able to do that, I need to be able to see the right triangles. So I've set up a coordinate system here with north and south being the y and east and west being the x. So vector A is 54 meters, 60 degrees north of east. So I'm going to go north of the east axis, which is going to be in the first quadrant here. So 6 degrees is going to be in here, because you're sweeping north of the east axis. And then the 54 meters is going to be the vector arrow. And so we're going to set up triangles, right triangles here. So we're going to have an x component. So this is going to be a of x. And we're going to have a y component. So this is going to be a of y. So notice that the direction of my components matches the direction of the original vector arrow, where it is pointing up and to the right, so my x is to the right, and my y is up. I'm now going to take advantage of trig functions in order to determine what the x component and the y component is. So a of x is going to equal the magnitude of the vector, times the cosine of the angle. Because remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the x component of vector A is going to be 27 meters. And to find the y component, I'm going to take the magnitude of the vector times the sine of the angle, because remember sine of an angle is equal to opposite over the hypotenuse. So I'm going to take the 54 meters times the sine of 60 degrees. And that is going to give me 46.8 meters. All right, so now I need to do vector B. Vector B is 30 degrees south of west. So I need to look at the west direction and go south of it. So that's going to be the third quadrant. So 30 degrees south of west. And the magnitude of the vector is the 30 meters. And once again, I need to draw in my components. So I'm going to have b of x and b of y. All right, so once again, my x component is adjacent. So that means I'm going to use cosine. So let's see, 30 meters times the cosine of 30 degrees, and that's going to give me 
26 meters. Now, we do have to be careful here. This is pointing to the left instead of the right, so this is typically considered the negative direction. That's not going to come out of your calculator. So anytime you are breaking something in the components, you need to double check on whether or not that component is in the positive direction or the negative direction. And we're going to see the same thing when we get to the y direction because it's pointing to the left and down. So we're going to use sine again in order to find the y component because the 30 degrees is opposite to the angle provided. And your calculator should give you 15 meters, but because it's down and not up, we need to put a negative sign up front. And once again, your calculator is not going to give that to you. That's something you have to ask, a question you need to ask yourself essentially in your head as you're doing this process. This is also a good time to double check and make sure your calculator is in degrees and not in radians, especially if you just bought a new calculator. A calculator default modes are to be in radians. At the beginning half of the semester, we're going to be working in degrees. So you're going to make sure that you're in degrees. Now we need to do our last vector, vector C. So vector C is north of west. So we're now going to sweep above the west axis rather than below it. So that's going to put us in the second quadrant. So our 15 degrees is going to be in here. And then our 17 meters is going to be, once again, the hypotenuse of the triangle. All right, so now we need to draw in our components. And unfortunately, this makes this a little messy because C of X and B of X are going to be on top of each other. And then we have C of Y. All right, so now we need to use our trig functions again to break our vector into components. So C of X is going to equal the magnitude of the vector times the cosine of the angle, because once again, the X component is adjacent. So we're going to take our 17 meters times the cosine of 15 degrees. And this is going to give us 16.4 meters. And once again, because it's pointed to the left rather than pointing to the right, we need to make it negative. And then C of Y, we're going to use the magnitude of the vector times the sine of the angle because the Y component is once again opposite. And I always check because every once in a while you are given an angle where X and Y are flipped. So you don't want to get yourself in trouble by making an assumption. So always check to make sure the X component is adjacent and the Y component is opposite. All right, so we're going to plug in our 17 meters again times the sine of 15 degrees. And that's going to give you... 4.4 meters. In this case though, unlike B, the Y component is pointed up, which means it's going to be positive. So the X and Y component do not have to have the same sign. All right, so now that we've broken the vectors into components, we can actually do the addition part. So we're going to add our X components together and that's going to equal R of X. And we're going to add our Y components together and that's going to equal R of Y. R standing for resultant, which is the math vocabulary word for the answer to an addition problem. So I've written down the formula here. Uh, R of X is equal to A of X plus B of X plus C of X, and R of Y is equal to A of Y plus B of Y plus C of Y. So we just need to plug our numbers in here. So we need to take 27 meters plus negative 26 meters plus negative 16.4 meters. So R of X is going to equal a negative 15.4 meters. And then for R of Y, we're going to add together 46.8 meters plus negative 15 meters plus 4.4 meters. So R of Y is going to equal 36.2 meters. So now we have the X and Y component of our answer to our addition problem. So we know the X component and the Y component of A of A plus B plus C. But we want to know what the magnitude and direction of that 
addition is. So now we need to put our x and y component back together into a magnitude and direction. In order to find the magnitude and direction of the resulting vector, we're going to take advantage of right triangle tree again. So we have the two components of the vector, which are going to be the sides of the right triangle. So I'm going to draw that in a coordinate system. Our x component is negative, and I always do the x first. So we're going to draw our x in here, so r of x is negative, and then y is positive. So I'm going to draw that upward. R of y. So notice I'm drawing the y component off the tip of the x component. And then the magnitude of the vector is going to be once again the hypotenuse of the triangle. So in order to find the hypotenuse of that triangle, we are going to use Pythagorean's theorem. So the magnitude of r is going to equal the square root of r of x squared plus r of y squared. So I'm going to sub in the x and y component of the resultant vector. Make sure to use parentheses so that negative sign gets squared as well. And that is going to give us 39.3 meters. All right, so we have the magnitude. This is just the magnitude, so you have to be careful with vectors. Vectors need magnitude and direction. We also need to find the angle in here. And since we have the two sides of the triangle, those are our components, we're going to use tangent, because remember, tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So in order to find the angle or direction, we're going to use the inverse tangent of r of y of r of x. So in this case, we are going to do 36.2 meters over negative 15.4 meters. And that's going to give us an angle of 67 degrees. Now we do have to be careful because we have to put it relative to some point. Because there's a difference between 67 degrees here versus 67 degrees here. So we need to always put it relative to an axis. So you can say 67 degrees above the negative x-axis, or you can say 67 degrees north of the west axis, so north of west, or 67 degrees above the negative x-axis. So you always have to give a reference point so you establish where the zero point is, where you're measuring from. All right, so now that we've talked about addition of vectors, Let's talk a little bit about subtraction. Subtraction is very, very similar to addition. So we're going to use the same component method. So say we want to do vector A minus vector B plus vector C, and we want to know what that is. I've written down the tail end of our example problem where we needed to add together the x components and add together the y components. The only thing we would do, because we're making vector b negative, is essentially flipping it 180 degrees. And the way we effectively do this is by flipping the signs of the components. So instead of a negative 26, I would make this a positive 26. Instead of a negative 15 meters, it would be a positive 15 meters. And then I would continue with the rest of the component method. So in order to subtract, essentially you just flip the signs of the components, which is essentially the same as flipping the direction of the vector 180 degrees. I also want to talk briefly about multiplying by a scalar quantity. So if I wanted to say, do vector A plus 3 times vector B plus vector C, and figure out what that is, instead of flipping the signs, this time we would just multiply each of the components. So I would take 3 times a negative 26 and 3 times a negative 15 meters and then I would continue on with the component method. Now this only works if you're multiplying by a scalar number, so just the number 3 for example that we did here. If it's another vector quantity, so if you want to take vector A times vector B, that's a completely different story and we'll cover that in a later lecture um, video.